Stearns here. Let me hide this. Hey, let's go down to the unit on Rome, shall we? Because that's where we're at. Oh, that's Greece. Oh, there it is. Remember, we did the um, geo challenge here that's already been turned in. Um, the last day to turn it in is the 17th. The due date was the 10th of November, and the window closes on the 17th. Do you see how that works? The first date is the due date, and then with the last due date is when the window closes. Okay, so don't forget, it's the first due date if you're on a plan when the time starts. All right. Okay, we did. We will be moving on to this. Mr. Ferries will be talking about moving us from Roman Republic to the Empire of Rome and daily life in Rome. And we're talking about the origin and spread of Christianity this week. We're reading it and talking about how did Christianity originate or begin and spread, which means to grow. And in the end, what it turns out to be is war, marriage. And I suppose trade has a lot to do with it. Those will be my three paragraphs, body paragraphs, if I was writing an essay to that question. How did Christianity originate and spread? And again, I would change this question because I don't like big, long words. I would change originate to start or begin and spread. I would do like grow. I like shorter, easier ones. Does that make sense? So we're going to read this together and talk about the origin and spread of Christianity and especially how it connects to the Roman Empire. You think about it, the Romans are the ones who were in charge when um, the Christians, Messiah, Jesus, um, was killed. And then Constantine, the emperor, later actually adopts Christianity as Rome's official or religion. Doesn't that seem ironic? Isn't that interesting? Boy, if I could go back in a time machine, I would really want to go back here. Okay. Um, so learning about world Christianity, that's, we're going to take this week off to finish up our Rome work from up here. Do you see how I'm doing that, guys? I gave you some work up here for the rise of the Roman Republic. The due date's already passed and the window is still open. So I'm starting on the next lesson where there's no work. I'm giving us a break to get caught up. You're welcome. You're welcome. And then I'm giving you the background for what you need for your next work. Do you see how I'm thinking ahead? Are you thinking ahead too? Are you using a planner for real? Okay, so we're going to be moving on to 37, uh, learning about world religions and Christianity. Our essential question is right here, guys. This is what you have to know at the end. They always just tell you, right? How are Christians' lives shaped by their beliefs and practices of Christianity? So in other words, what are the beliefs and practices of Christians? And how does that impact their life? Remember, we're tying in all of the religion that we study this year to our norms in our classroom. Show respect, be engaged, be trustworthy. Guys, isn't, isn't religion really about ethics? Do you really need a religion to have a community? No, you just need a code of ethics and you need to live by it. We are in the time period in history where the Romans really focused in on Christianity as their monotheistic because they moved from a polytheistic religious system to a more monotheistic. Does that make sense? Okay. So we're going to be moving here to 37. You won't see this. That's a teacher's version. Let's go to your textbook. Okay. And as always, what do we do? Let's make this a little bit smaller. We always first start out by looking at the title and then connecting it to our essential question. Okay, then I'm going to go through, and you can do it a couple of different ways. You need to not memorize right now, but just go through these about three or four times each and just kind of get a feel for it. What is baptism? Okay, baptism is that. Okay, then go on to the next card and do that. Okay, Eastern Orthodox Church. I know that's really important at the beginning of Christian. I got that. Christian church. Okay. So you're, do you see the process? You're going back and you're trying to just get a feel for the words. So when you come across them like widespread, this, the information makes more sense. Does that, you, you feel me? Okay. Okay. So you're going to go through and you're going to study your vocabulary. You're going to look carefully at this right here. Okay. Isn't that nice? Beautiful. Let's move my face down here. Okay, 
carefully look at that and think about how that picture ties into this. Okay, well, any other words down here we need to know? Okay, I'm going to read this last thing because I know that that's going to tell me what's going to be on the test. And before I read, I want to get my mind ready. In this lesson, you will learn more about Christians' belief. Okay, so I need to know about beliefs. What do they believe in? You will see how early Christian communities became a religion with many branches. Yeah, that's true. You will also examine the beliefs and practices that have given meaning to and shaped the lives of Christians for nearly 2,000 years. Basically, we're going to do the same thing we did with Islam. Does that make sense? Looking at the beliefs and practices. Why? Because that's how social scientists make good calculated guesses about why people are doing things in the past, in the past because we weren't there. But if we know the religion, we know their code of ethics, and we can make better guesses at what they were doing and why. Okay? So after you read this, you're going to have an assignment. It won't be online. Okay? It'll be in our textbook or in our ISN book because you already have copies of it. If you're going to use this one online, you are responsible for printing this off and turning it in as a hard copy. Okay, I'm not gonna go around trying to find that stuff anymore. I spent too many hours on that, it was not worth my time. So you're gonna finish this assignment in your ISN book and then move on to the next section. And then you're gonna do the reading the same way. You're gonna look at the title, the central beliefs, Oybe. Central beliefs, I'm gonna look right here at this picture I'm going to read this. Oh, the Holy Trinity. You want to know about that. That's especially important when you get to your Eastern Orthodox and your Catholic friends. Okay. Um, I see some major words here that I need to know before I read. So I'm looking at those. I'm going through and I'm actually reading them. I'm doing it quickly. I know that. Now I see that there is a major um, heading here, but there are subheadings here. So guys, here's the deal. Look at this right here. When you write an essay or something like that, when they give you subheadings, what they're basically telling you is this. This is what your paragraph wants to be about. These are the two main points you need to talk about. So whenever you see subheadings, remember these subheadings help you answer this question. And all of these are details that can help you explain that to the reader. If you use the textbook, if you know about textbooks and you know how they work, it gives you a huge advantage. Do you see that? Are you actually taking the time to understand how to take control of your textbook? Okay. So when you're finished, and then you go back and you read this whole thing, keying in on this paragraph, because they always tell you what's important, okay, and tying it into this topic. Let's look at the main ideas before we read, shall we? Do you see how the Holy Trinity helps you answer this question, what are the central beliefs? In order to answer what are the central beliefs, you have to know what the Holy Trinity is. So you'd have to explain it. Do you see how these main ideas would help you explain that? And then when you get down to more information, if you want to go deeper, have you ever had a teacher say, I need more depth? Well, what they're saying is, I need you to tell me more about this. Okay, if you've talked about the Holy Trinity, it gives you some big background. But now go back and talk about the resurrection and salvation and how that connects to this title. Are you starting to feel it? Okay, that's if you actually pay attention in class, you get this. That's why I say you need to be engaged. When you're not engaged, you miss this whole skill. You're just checking out, trying to do the work. You're just trying to grab grades. You're not really worried about learning. I'm just saying. This is a tool if you use it appropriately. If you don't, it's a toy. Okay. Okay. It's a learning game. And then you'll be asked to, again, another spoke diagram. You're going to have to put things here. I would guess this would be the Holy Trinity, Resurrection, and what was the other one? Resurrection and Salvation, maybe. Okay. So I'm looking at that. Fill that in. You want to do that. Okay. If you're going to do it online, make sure you have a printout. Okay. Do not turn it in. I'm not going to look. Okay. So we now go back and read it and do our work. Let's go on to the next section. Where are we at with that? Okay, let's see how many sections there are. You see how I'm using this, guys? I'm using this to help guide me. Okay, and if I were going to write an essay about this big essential question, these would help guide how, many, how I would write my paragraphs. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing as we always do. We're going to look at the picture here. 
You're going to say, oh, Martin Luther. I know what that is. Martin Luther. Martin Luther King was named after Martin Luther in the Reformation. Okay, so what's this about? From one church to many. Oh, the Reformation. Okay, so the central religion in Christianity kind of has a fight. They have a disagreement about a couple of things and they branch off. Okay, so you've got your um, main branch of Christianity, Catholicism and Orthodox, and then it branches off to Protestant. Okay, and Martin Luther is central to the Protestants. So if you're Baptist, Presbyterian, or you celebrate any number of a Protestant religions, Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King, Martin Luther, who Martin Luther King was named after, is the central figure. You really need to know who Martin Luther is. Okay, so make sure you know about Martin Luther. That's always on jeopardy. Here is the title of the section from one church to many. Notice how this will help you answer that question. There was something called a schism of 1054. A schism is like a clashing and a breakup. Does that make sense? So if you have an earthquake, you might have a schism. Does that make sense? All right. So you need to talk about the Roman Catholic Church because that had something to do with the Great Schism and the Eastern Orthodox, Orthodox Church. There was a clash, a schism, an issue. And they had to try to solve it, and they did that by breaking up. And that's what the uh, Reformation is about. So you need to tie that back in with um, from one church to many. Okay. Notice how I'm highlighting my stuff. Why do I highlight my stuff? I'll show you why. If you go down to notes, it makes your notes. Do you see how that? And then if I have to write an essay, I have all my notes organized. Didn't know that? Now you do. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Central beliefs. Let's go back from one church to many. You've got your schism here. Let's make that green. I like that green. Or is that blue? I think I did blue last time. You want to try to stay with the same color because your brain will start to adjust to that color. And every time it sees that color, it's going to know that it's a subheading. So I, my brain just kind of skips. I already know if I have to write a paragraph, it's going to be about from one church to many. I'm going to talk about the schism and the Reformation. For sure, I'm going to talk about the Roman and Eastern. You're not writing an essay, but I'm just trying to get you to think. Okay, Great, great students talk to themselves as they work out loud. They really do, guys. Okay, um, I, I know when I'm in class, I wouldn't want to say it out loud. People might put you in like a funny farm. <laughs> Again, this is a tool if you use it correctly. It's a toy if you don't. And then you're going to go to your ISN and you're going to start answering these questions. If you're going to do it online, you must print it out. You must. There's no getting around it. I can't keep doing that back and forth deal. does not work. Okay. So you want to then read that and then you move forward. You keep doing the whole thing. One of the main ideas, looking at the pictures, really thinking about it. What do we have to do? You're going to do the assignment down below. Got it. Got it. A tool, if it's used appropriately, answer the questions, restating, capitalization, punctuation. All the information is in this section for sure. Again, they don't ask you your opinion until the very end. Okay, so you're going to connect to the pictures, connect to your pictures, read those, look at your main ideas. Any vocabulary I need to know. I want to read this last par paragraph carefully. Okay, then you read that section. Moving on to the next section, make sure you do that work as well. The Christian year, looking at this picture. Okay. Title is something about the Christian year, so we need to know about the Christian year. There's something called Christmas, that's an important holiday. Any other? Oh, Easter is an important holiday for Christians, it looks like. Okay, and then I'm going to look at this last paragraph because I know that's where the author tells me everything that I need to know. Okay, any other vocabulary? Nope, let's look at the main ideas and read those. Okay, now I've read those. Now I'm ready to actually read the lesson. If you just start reading the lesson without doing that, it's all going to fall out of your head. You might get an A, but it's all going to fall out of your head. You're not going to remember anything. Are you trying to get the grade or learn? Do that for the whole lesson. And then when you get to the end, now it's going to ask you. See, there's no main ideas because everything's a main idea. Now it's going to ask you your opinion after you read this. These are the key elements 
to answer the essential question. Do you see that? If you're going to write a paragraph to answer the essential question, you would want to talk about these things. These would be the paragraphs. And when you get really good, you can see how a couple of these paragraphs or a couple of these main points could be squished together into one paragraph. Do you see how these are the body paragraphs? And then if you put an introduction and a summary, you'd be in great shape. You'd be able to answer the original question. What was the original question, guys? Oh, yeah, here it is. How are Christians' lives shaped by the beliefs and practices of Christianity? Well, let's go back. Let's take a look at the summary. Well, the answer's got to have something to do with here are the central beliefs. Some kind of reformation with Martin Luther and the schism. What are the sacraments? What are the most important things? Okay, sacraments would be like practices, beliefs, okay, holy communion, commun communion, excuse me. And then I would talk about Christian worship and Christian year. Okay, do you see how that answers the question? All right, make sure you get all of your ISN work done. Oh my goodness, where's my ISN book? Here it is, guys. Make sure you get all your ISN work done. And I'm looking at, that's page, that's 36 in our ISN, 37 actually. 36 we're not going to do. If you want to do 36 ISN and you staple that work to 37, that will absolutely help you and you'll earn a challenge coupon. So for those go-getters that are looking to learn a lot, feel free to go ahead and do the 36. It's not required, but it will help you and you will earn a challenge um, coupon, which of course is always going to help you. 37, here it is, guys. Page 265 in your ISN. Please make sure you do all of these pages, restating the questions in your answers, keying in on the timeline, because again, once again, calendars are timelines too. Does that make sense? And now the processing is the one place that they ask you to take all the information that you've learned so far. So if you've just read the book just to get the answers, you're not you're going to have a problem with processing because they're asking you to take everything you learn, think about it as a social scientist, and now answer the question. You can't answer this without reading it thoroughly. And that's the difference between great students and good students. That's it. Now what you're going to do is put it all together after you rip it out of your ISN. You're going to staple it together. You're going to put a piece of paper on it, and you're going to title the paper, and that's called an evidence folder. Some people are going to start to color them. You watch. These evidence folders turn out to be amazing, guys. You, if you use the evidence folder, you'll be finished with your work earlier, which gives you time to decorate your evidence folder, which allows the information to sink deeper into your head. Does that make sense? Hope without action, guys, is a dream unfulfilled. If you're looking for an A, that's one thing. But if you're looking to learn, that's a different game. I hope you do it the way we're talking about. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.